All right. Um, I've been getting a lot of emails as far as uh, needing help with problems in this format here. One thing that I have noticed is that a lot of people have been able to find the vertex and the axis of symmetry uh, with no problem. Uh, for example, this one here, this one would have a vertex of negative 4, negative 1, right? And that's based off of this, this equation here, right? Notice that it's plus 4. Since it's plus 4, um, when we subtract the opposite, of h we end up with that positive with that addition so it's x plus four and and so the axis of symmetry is going to be our x coordinate for our vertex so this right here would be x equals negative four right now i can go ahead and graph that so i'm going to go ahead and graph my axis of symmetry at x equals negative four okay and I'm going to label it uh, x equals negative 4. Now notice that, excuse me, notice that negative 2, or this value of a, is negative. It's less than 0. So that's going to be, um, we're going to have a maximum, right? I know that I'm going to have a maximum, and it's going to be opening down, right? It's going to opening downward. So opening downward. Okay, now let's go ahead and let's find, um, I don't know, oh, actually I do know what my max is, max of negative 1 at x equals negative 4, and I'm using my vertex. Hopefully um, that doesn't interfere with my graph. If it does, then I'll go ahead and have to um, redo that, but uh, for now let's go ahead and let's find my y-intercept. Now my y-intercept, that is the value of y when x equals 0. Okay, so what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and let x let x equal 0. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and take this equation here. Um, I'm going to use green. y equals negative 2 times 0 plus 4 squared minus 1. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and follow my order of operations. Uh, I'm going to take that sum in my parentheses. That is a 4 squared minus 1. And if you use your handy-dandy calculator, you can go ahead and calculate that right there, just how you see it written. Make sure that uh, you include your parentheses. And that's going to be, wait, minus 1? No, it should be, it should be minus 1, not minus 2. Minus 1. And y is equal to negative 33. Now notice that I don't want to go ahead and draw 33 units down this way. I just want you to know, um, I want you to find them, the y-intercept. Even if it's not on our graph, I want you to know that it does exist, right? And it's going to be way down here. Now that I have my y-intercept, I want to find my x-intercepts. Right. I know that. Well, actually, at this moment, I don't know if they exist, but um, let's go ahead and let's find out. OK, so I have the equation y is equal to negative two times x plus four squared minus one. And I want to know when this equals zero. OK, I want to know when this equation here is going to equal. Minus one, sorry, minus one is equal to zero, okay? And I forgot to plot my uh, vertex. That right there is negative four, negative one. Okay, negative four, negative one. And so I want to know when this is going to be equal to zero. So if I solve this, right, and if uh, this, this is what we studied before we, uh, before school closed, right? So you can go back in your notes and look this up. Um, so let's go ahead and let's finish this up. So I'm left with negative two x plus four squared uh, is equal to one. Notice that this here, it works similar to a coefficient. So I'm going to divide everything here by negative two. Whatever this value of a is, I'm going to divide by it. Okay, this is going to be negative two so 
x plus 4 squared is equal to negative 1 half. Now what's left to do, I'm going to bring my work up here, is I'm going to go ahead and take the square root of both sides. Right, Since I have this square here, I'm going to take the square root of both sides. And this leaves me with x plus 4 is equal to plus or minus the square root of negative 1 half. But notice that my uh, radicand is negative, which means that I'm going to have a... I'm going to have a complex, two complex solutions here since I have a negative in my radicand. So this is going to be, if I subtract 4 from both sides, it's going to be x is equal to negative 4 plus or minus the square root of negative 1 half. So I have no x-intercepts. No x-intercepts. Okay, no x-intercepts. Uh, what you can do to find another point, um, you can let x equal 3 and into this equation here, uh, into this equation. I just want to find another point, just so that way I can, since I know there's not going to be any x-intercepts, I want to find another point. And I can, I chose 2, or excuse me, negative 3 because it's the next point over. You could have chose negative 2, negative 1. You can let um, x equal uh, whatever value you want. So I'm going to let x equals negative 3. And so I'm going to solve for y. So there's going to be negative 2 times negative 3 plus 4 squared minus 1. And I'm going to go ahead and simplify this. Negative 2. This is uh, 1 squared minus 1. And I'm going to go ahead and negative 2 minus 1. y is equal to negative 3. Oh, sorry. y is equal to negative 3. Now, um, I could have easily uh, put it into this equation here. This is a negative 3. And if you're wondering, where did this negative 3 come from? Well, I just chose negative 3 because it's the next coordinate uh, over from my axis of symmetry. And notice that I have a point at negative 3, negative 3. So I'm going to go ahead and plot that, negative 3, negative 3. And since this is symmetrical, I can go ahead and plot this right here. Now, I've seen a lot of people uh, that have drawn these, and they look very similar to absolute value functions. And they you drew a straight line through these, but it's not a straight line. It's supposed to have like this U-shaped, right? This U-shape right here. And I've probably... Um, I've probably made them like a little straighter from here to here, but I do want you to know that it has this parabolic, it has this uh, this behavior here. And I found this point here, negative three, negative three, by letting x equals negative equal negative three. So that's how I found a point, and that's how I dealt with this uh, this a. A lot of people have been asking questions on how to deal with that. So if you have any questions, again, feel free to email me and I can answer any questions you may have.